<laughs> Welcome to the spooky episode of Doctor Who's Community Show. Yeah, I know how to invert colors. What's up? <laughs> well, if you think this episode's spooky, you wait till the one closer to Halloween. <laughs> Let's get on with it, shall we? First off, is something I can't stop myself from saying. Doctor Who The Community Show will be live at MCM London Comic Con on Friday the 22nd of October in like two weeks. Ha! Ah! I hope most if not all of you had already seen the announcement video that went out, but yes, I will be live on stage with Dominic G. Martin, Russell on Productions and Philip Hawkins Friday 22nd of October 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. I am beyond thrilled and excited to be a part of it. Anyway, I am still very excited to get this opportunity. So if you can, get that Friday priority ticket and come and see the show. I'm gonna be on stage at Comic-Con. This is a dream. <sighs> anyway. Oh, and I know I'm not really the news, but there's this guy, um, they released a new showrunner. A guy called Russell T. Davies. Uh, I think he's a French artist, so it's uh, Rossel T. Davies. And he likes to make, uh, he made uh, years and months, as well as it's a, it's a godsend. So, uh, <laughs> well, that was, that was a terrible, terrible joke. I apologize for that. It really must be Spooktober because these jokes are horrifying. And I can say who I've interviewed this time as I've done it in advance. Daniel J. Patton of Fractured Timeline very kindly lent his time. And we will get to that later on. Oh, so I can add him to my awesome art that I made? I say awesome art, it's fine. But I, I just wanted to make a piece as a thank you to all the guests I've had on. And I'm just going to keep updating it as we go. So, yeah, that's, that's a thing that exists. So, with the intro out of the way, let us get on to Doctor Who the Community Show. Episode 9! Hello, I'm Christopher Eccleston. Do you like f***ing fruit? <laughs> And here we are in the spooky fan film section. So spooky that they're all trailers. The spookiest. <laughs> First up by SC is Doctor Who, the Arcadian Universe teaser trailer. Being a teaser, it doesn't show a lot, but it's something to keep an eye on. Definitely go and subscribe and wait for more news on that. Next is Fortuna Vega Studios, who you might recognize from their Torchwood 2000 episodes, which I featured last episode. But this time it's a Doctor Who centric project. The trailer for Memories Are Forever, a Doctor Who saga is out and it looks incredible. Sleep now. So, you and your mates fight aliens. I think we're being followed. Turn your phone off. You know what's happening? Something or someone is following us. Half man, half machine. You died. Do I have your agreement? <laughs> she, okay, let's try. Mess with me? And I'll top your balls off. It always surprises me just the sheer quality, uh, specifically of the footage, really, uh, that uh, fan films can get these days. But aside from the camera, it looks like it's got a great cast, and I'm very excited to see it. And finally, Fractured Timeline is back with Dimension of the Daleks. The Daleks have ruled over this dimension for the past five years. A lot of time space. Mike, what are you doing? Ending this. Capture human resistance in the name of the Dalek Empire. You're thinking about leaving, aren't you? Daniel J. Patton and his team has done an incredible job and, well, I'd love to talk to him someday. You can cut to the interview. Hello? Hello? How are you doing? Oh, sorry, there's a bit of a flare going on. I'm trying to do some nice cinematic lighting, but I didn't account for the webcam. <laughs> it looks like there's a person, just like, of, of a man of light has entered your room and is just staring oh. me out. So, Doctor Who Community Show, take one. <laughs> first take, first try. 
So, hello, I am Jalak Pleaves. Well, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Daniel. Uh, you are now the third Dynamic Works doctor that I've managed to get on, so I'm, I'm, I'm closing in on the whole set. Just Connor next. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. <laughs> Just before we get started, when I joined, I forgot about this whiteboard behind me because I was filming an announcement for something like a big thing that's about to happen. The announcement might be out by the time. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm in my pajamas. Don't question me. It's fine. I'm in shorts, so it's all good. You know what this logo is? I am very aware what the logo is. Yes. Doctor Who the Community Show live at Comic Con. Oh my god! That's that's awesome. That's awesome, man. That is, that is insane. Let's get on to the first question. And really, it should be obvious. It's why we're talking. You have a brand new trailer out for Dimensions of the Daleks. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Dimension of Daleks is about uh, a dimension where there's Daleks. Oh, we're getting some, we're getting some insight here. The actual like synopsis about the the episode is that the, the Doctor and Maggie decide to travel into the multiverse because we teased it in the very first episode, and ever since then people are like, oh, when are you going to actually do the multiverse? You said it there, that's a, like Chekhov's gun. Where are you going to fire it? I'm like, okay, do it for the, the, the first episode of our new series. But obviously they don't go to a very good dimension. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a good one, no. Chekhov's gun should have fired in a different direction by the sounds of it. <laughs> the audience asked for this. <laughs> now I just imagine all your comments just reading, take the shot, take the shot. But in this dimension, the Daleks uh, have taken over completely. They've taken over time and space in this dimension. And now with the Doctor and Maggie there, they, they also then bump into Maggie's brother in this dimension who's alive which he wasn't in their dimension and now she's sort of de dealing with a lot of different things like the Daleks were the responsible were the reason why her brother died in her dimension and now she's facing Daleks she just needs to face her brother again it's a lot of things going on for the companion and not so much me to be honest <laughs> is that a conscious choice to focus more on the companions than the doctor himself I was writing it and I was, tr I was trying like I should really try and fit in some some doctor scenes here, but I'm just enjoying writing for the characters so much. I'm like, I do write bits in. There are a couple of noteworthy scenes I have of my doctor, but they're too spoilery to, to talk about. Of course. But, Silence. Yeah. Guys, this, this is Luke, Meg, and Dom all over again. Whenever I'd ask Meg a question, it's always like, oh, that's a Series 5 thing, can't tell you. And I'm like, oh, well, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, we're, we're very secretive at Dynamic Works and Fracture Timeline. It's just, it's all very hush hush we like we like to keep secrets as the guy interviewing you i can i appreciate that thank you but then again i immediately opened this call with a big spoiler so really i can't talk at all i wish i could tell i wish i could but at the same time it's like then the whole thing gets like <laughs> so um you heard it here first uh, the doctor dies in this fan film and that's it the end how does it feel to be currently the only irish doctor Currently, it's bound to happen one day. RTD, if you are listening to this, come on, let's get, let's get, let's get some Irish representation in the show. That's Irish Broadchurch in the Timeless Children does not count. We're currently trying to add more culture of uh, some Irish culture into our series, into our show because we didn't really do much of that in our first series. Not so much that it forgets its roots, but at the same time, just so it's representing like who we are and what we are making it. And so I suppose the Irish Doctor tagline that, or, or the nickname you have is was always just kind of, oh, he has the accent. Everyone started calling me the Irish Doctor purely because, well, my voice. Did the nickname not come from you? It just came from people uh, just being like, oh, you're Irish. I don't remember where it started. Like everyone then started calling Luke the little red one. Then they started calling another one the the blonde and then like what are you gonna call me what are you gonna, you gonna call me the the trilby the, the it's like well you're irish aren't you he's like is that, is that seriously all i'm noted for being irish well that's nice isn't it if you were to give yourself a nickname what would it be i sort of like irish too much now to give it up i don't know what it, i don't know what else i would call myself the best doctor just really annoy the other ones <laughs> there we go give yourself a oh, complex oh, i'll top every single other doctor by having myself the doctor the the doctor oh that would be brilliant <laughs> just like oh yes i'm the purple doctor who are you i'm the the doctor i'm the one that has to have the double the because i am the doctor moving on from that i'll be honest whenever i get a guest on i always instinctively 
Go to their channel, go to their page, click oldest to newest and see what's there. And I was very disappointed to find that it, for, for Fractured Timeline at least, it only goes back to 2018. Where's the cringe, Daniel? I live off the cringe. I purged the cringe whenever I made the first episode because I, I knew it was going to get some views and I didn't want people to discover the cringe. <laughs> no! If you dig for it, you'll find it. It's not privated, it's unlisted. So it's somewhere out there. There should be, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure we scour through the internet somewhere you'll find it. I'm not going to start giving you hints, but why, why would I? I mean, even Luke is just like, the right stuff Luke's doing for Series 5 is uh, that boy's a credit to his work. To his work. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've been, I can say this now, as, uh, as I was briefly in the first Series 5 trailer, that, yeah, it, pure professionalism as soon as that Amazing camera comes out. Oh, have you seen that new camera? I have the exact same camera. Yeah, I'm using it to record right now. Hello. There it is. Oh, there it is. Get it. Everybody gawk at that. Oh, and you've got the little screen as well. Oh, the cheeky you. Suppose I'll turn it around. Here's my little DSLR. Here it oh, is. It? What, what, what camera is that? That one. Can you see that? I have. I have the exact same camera. I'm sorry. Oh, really? I also have the 700D. I still use it for photography. Boom. Oh. Although I will mention I did used to do figure adventures like like Luke, but I will not mention those. <laughs> those are privates. You'll never find those. Oh, one day, Patton. Moving aside from the fan films, which you are probably safe to say most known for, you are also a graphic designer and a VFX artist. In fact, that's how I first came across you, because you did the art for Venus Flint episode one, which I was featured in. What are something you are the most proud of? So like art wise and VFX wise. Which one has caused me the least amount of sleep? <laughs> I'm very proud of both. I used to be mainly VFX, but now I haven't really grown into graphic design and digital and doing digital artwork. There's a lot I've done recently, especially for, for like the Overton Audio stuff that I'm very proud of that I wish I can show off, but that, that'll come soon. But the thing is with, with graphic design, it's just like, it's just simple, drag and do this. And it's like, you gotta make one frame look good. For VFX, a lot more frames. <laughs> I do still love VFX, but I think I've sort of grow more as a graphic designer as time went on especially over lockdown when audio was became such a thing and people were seeking a lot of graphic design well is there any specific vfx shot you've done in the past where you're like oh i smashed it i, I did four series of dw 2012 so just, I, I, have, I have no specific shots in mind it's just it's, it's too much to dig up. The whole DW2012 franchise is known for looking absolutely incredible and no small part thanks to your amazing VFX work and no doubt. Thank you very much. Just to feed your ego. That, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to build you up and then smash you back down at a later date. That's that's the uh, community show guarantee. My final question before I, a, a cheeky little quiz at the end uh, just to really really bug you in some way although I bet you're gonna know the answers anyway. How did you become part of the timeline anyway? Like how did that start? Oh, that's, a, that's a long story and a half. Oh, there was a foggy Tuesday night in uh, July and I simply opened up my laptop and I asked Luke <laughs> <laughs> I was so ready to settle in. I was ready. I got a nice warm cup of tea, just ready for a nice story. Just asked him, is it really that easy? It was. He was making the 50th anniversary special. And he was saying, oh, I got all these doctors in. And I was like, could you could you fit me in? And he was like, yeah, sure. Why not? I'm pretty sure he rewritten the thing. And I was like, I was just like being that pesky friend. It's like, come on, fit me in. Fit me in as well. Fit me in. Come on, please. Did you know him before though? Did, did you already have a, a friendship? Yes, we had a friendship. We were commenting on each other's videos when we we were doing like the the action figure Avengers stuff. Again, good luck trying to find. I will. I will. We commented on that. We were collaborating on that. Sometimes like we were doing voices for each other's stuff. And then he told me he was doing a live action series. I said, would you need help with the effects and all that? And, oh, that set me down a dark, dark path. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't know what you signed up for. Oh. I didn't know what I'm signing up for. So, here's a quiz. And I did this. this I did the same with uh, your fellow doctors. And I'll be honest, they, they, they smashed it. I have in this phone an image that shows the timeline of doctors from DW2012 including the era gaps. Just the era gap. I don't know why I had to do the quotations. From start to finish, I'd like you 
to name all the doctors in order, including the era gaps. Is that something you are willing to do? Yes. And also, Jack, just to let you know, I created that image. <laughs> Why didn't I think? You're the flipping graphic designer! Of course you did! Okay. <laughs> I think I'm so clever. I think I'm so This is what happens when I plan an interview a day after. God, all right, let's do it. I made it two years ago, so I might have forgotten. Okay, um... God, I'm, my mind's drawing a blank already. We have the young doctor. Ooh. No, oh, no, sorry. We have the northern doctor, the young doctor, the era gap, the, the blonde doctor, the little red doctor, uh, the purple doctor, era ga a gap, the lost doctor, the Irish doctor, era gap, and the Gravat Doctor drops the mic. The mic can indeed be dropped. So you absolutely smashed it. Well done, Daniel J. Patton, who made the image I'm literally using for reference. I'm an idiot. In, in all fairness, I did, I did an April Fool's prank that heavily backfired on me. <laughs> Right, well, yes, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure, and hopefully my footage was usable because I noticed I kept doing this, and that puts me out of frame. You're all good, man. It was an absolute pleasure being on the show. Uh, I Generally, great work with the show, man. Been loving it so far. I've been killing it. Can't wait to see what else you do. It is getting late. I will let you be free to your world, and uh, I'm sure the robot lady was going to tell us that the recording has... Recording stopped. That. <laughs> Thank you to Daniel for lending me his time and letting me interview him. Also, I did not realise he had his trailer going on a loop behind him. He, he kept that secret. Moving swiftly on. Oh. Can you hear me? <laughs> Talking about audios in the Ninth Doctor jacket just makes me happy. Say what you will about the audios themselves, but... We got Eccleston back as the Doctor, and I'm still pretty chuffed about that. Big Finnish employees, you are my god, and I will pray to you. It's the spooky episode, which means cult references, apparently. I mentioned part one of A New Future by Gary the Word, and here's part two. <laughs> Again, he was very kind in letting me play the 11th Doctor in this, and, uh, well, here's a, here's a cheeky old clip. Where would be the first place the master looks? If I had to guess, he would probably be heading to the mining site. You remember? The one with the Silurians under it? What's so special about that? Remember the crack there? It was so much bigger than any of the others I'd seen before it. Bigger has got to be better, right? Brilliant! Let's go look there first. Definitely go and check out part one as well if you haven't. Also, sorry if... You keep hearing my jacket over me. I wonder if Eccleston had that trouble on set, like he was trying to do his line, and he was like, My planet's gone. It was lost in a great war. Now that I think about it, probably not. The other audio adventure I am mentioning is Mondrax by Isaac Films. Or Isaac Films. Isaac? Isaac. You get it. It is the start of a brand new series, and you know what it's time for. It's time to read the description of it. The Doctor and Lily arrive on the Prostar 7, a space cruiser owned by the United Nations Intelligence Task Force, in parentheses, unit. But somehow, Captain General Briggs, presumably a uh, relation of Nick Briggs, and her crew have brought back a creature that the Doctor has met before and is about to murder anyone on board. Can the Doctor save the crew? And how does he know this creature? Find out in Series 1, Episode 1, Nearly Tripped Over, Mondrax by Isaac Films. Now that would be promotion. Really uh, throwing myself into this, huh? <sighs> I know I'm going to play the bloody Sarah Jane thing over that clip. Oh. <laughs> this looks a bit standard compared to our other adventures. I know it may not look like much. But I think it'll do for now. Let's hope nothing bad will happen. Now, when has that ever happened? Let me think. The Autons, that fiasco with the Daleks, when you crash the TARDIS into a space serpent. Those were minor events. But this time, I'm hoping that things will be a lot more calmer and more safer. Freeze! 
You are under arrest. Huh? What? Audio's done already. What? <laughs> Next. <laughs> I am on some weird energy today. I'm terribly sorry. Maybe it's the lighting. The ghosts have taken over. No, it's just me. Hang on, hang on. A second ago you were talking about peace in our time. Now you're talking about genocide. For us, that means the same thing. Then you need to get yourself a better dictionary. And when you do look up genocide, there's a little picture of me there and it'll say over my dead body. Oh, is that right? Maurice, get me a dictionary. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, well, wouldn't you know? You're right. Oh. Future husband, uh, dad, can we borrow the TARDIS? Me and Donna want to go clubbing. Oh, shut up, Daddy. Oi, I know you're watching Bear Club. Can you hear me or what? Now, this is a strange angle, but I'm keeping it. Also, yes, I'm filming this on a different day. I forgot to film the art section. Ha ha ha. First up, it's Aaron, or as your Twitter name says, IT WAS AARON ALL ALONG! <laughs> Something I love to see in the community is people going to places Doctor Who was filmed and sort of lining up their camera with certain shots from it. I would love to do this one day with cosplays, by the way, like try and get it as close as possible, but... That's a, that's, a, that's a future Jack problem. <laughs> but in the meantime, Aaron has done this. Here's a three of my personal favorites. And the way he's managed to line these up, it's impeccable. If they were all black and white, you'd really struggle to see where his image ends and the shows begins. It's brilliant. Aaron is also part of Friends of Ace, which is a fantastic account if you want to go check them out. They're all about inclusivity and such. Must get you on for an interview one of these days. Aaron, you seem like a very cool individual. Next is not an Instagram, not a Twitter, although he has a Twitter. It's a website. Specifically an online store. Dom Green Designs. He makes and sells these amazing Doctor Who designs. Specifically, the one I want to mention is the one I kind of want to buy. <laughs> it is this Five Doctors poster. And just the colours, the composition, I adore it. Also helps that the Five Doctors is my favourite Doctor crossover of all time. Yes, I'm saying that whilst Day of the Doctor exists and the Three Doctors exist. Bite me. If I had to rank them, it'd be Five Doctors, Three Doctors, Day of the Doctor two doctors twice upon a time but yes go and support dom green designs by buying one of his dom green's designs he was actually very kind sending me the uh, full image you saw a moment ago because i was originally going to use the watermark design as that was all that was available online <laughs> so thank you dom go and support him finally there's valk or valk zero valk sounds like something captain falcon would shout isn't it falk i am showing off two of their fabulous artwork and they are actually commissions done for someone else but he asked permission for me to show them off and they both said yes so hooray <laughs> specifically there are this one of the ninth doctor meeting davros you've really captured eccleston there something about that nose <laughs> but there is also the 13th doctor in midnight this one's probably my favorite of the two as i don't know something about the expressions in this one especially on 13 there is excellent also it reminds me of the amazing line jethro says uh, it's my favorite line quite possibly in all of doctor who no that's that's not true it's one of the funniest lines i'll say me and my friend harry have riffed on it a bunch it's um we've broken down oh stop it jethro in the middle of nowhere that's enough, now stop it! Yes, thank you, I'll uh, collect my Oscar on the way out. <laughs> but yes, that is the art section done, I know. I hate to say goodbye to the art section. This mirror keeps me safe. Nothing can get in or out, including me. Oh. Series 13, Mr. Chibnall, can you tell us anything? <laughs> no, no, no spoilers, nothing for Series 13. If any of my secrets got out, it would break the internet. None for you. Hey, Mr. Chibnall, where do you want the master's props? You know, for the master who's in Series 13, Mr. Chibnall, the master. Please, come on, I need to put this down. It's really heavy because it can... Oh, come on. Hello? Oh, I'll try the one shot. Cosplay, cosplay, cosplay. Whenever I hit that word, I always think, 
What am I going as for Comic-Con this year? Like, it's so close and it's so important and I'm I'm gonna be there the whole weekend too, so I get options, yeah, but like... I've gone as number 4, I've gone as number 10 and 11, I've gone as number 7. That does leave a lot of Doctors, but do I, like... Uh, it, it's a whole thing, I'll, I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll put it up to a poll, that'd be quite funny. Anyway, we're not here to talk about me! Ugh. First up is an 8th Doctor cosplayer on TikTok. Goes a clock. Called <coughs> Dr. Hedgehog 1187. And I mean, where do I get that coat? Where do I get that cravat? Where do I get that waist? Oh. Okay, costumes aside, that hair. Check out that hair. Oh, hair goals to the max. I really need to get soundproofing. It's so echoey in here. Also, flicking through your TikTok. What's that? What's that? Much like a lot of cosplayers I feature, they do a lot with Abby of Traken because Abby is just kind of my in to the TikTok cosplay scene. <laughs> Abby's another one I need to do an interview with. Come on, I know you're close by. We can do that in person. But yes, go and check them out. Eighth Doctor fans, because Eighth Doctor's great. Also, I hope there's Chimes of Midnight content on there. If not, you're doing the Eighth Doctor really wrong. So says me, Jackie is Reeves. Up next is at the Ginger Doctor Who or Phil Smith. And just his cover photo on Twitter alone just makes me wonder where I'm going wrong in life. Like, I have kind of every Doctor, but not to the, like, accuracy of this. Definitely go and check out their account. It's a lot of choice if your favourite Doctor isn't on there. Scream in his face. Be like, why isn't he there? You're not a real fan. Now that's truly spooky. <laughs> and finally, there is the Winter Doctor. Now he's usually cosplaying as Matt Smith, AKA the 11th Doctor, if you didn't know that. Or is he the 12th regeneration of the Doctor? Moffat, you really messed up with my count. Same with you, Chibnall, I'm looking at you. But I thought I'd mix it up, because you don't see a lot of third Doctor cosplayers, and especially ones with Joe Grant herself, Katie Manning. Cosplaying as a certain Doctor or companion with that actor, is it, you get a kick out of it. Don't you? Definitely go and check out his 11th Doctor cosplays as well, though. They are pretty cool. I don't, I don't know what I was going to say. I mean, if this is what I'm like off the cuff, you got to wonder what a live performance would be like. I am terrified. I haven't been on stage since 2015, man. Sorry, it's the Comic-Con thing's all I can think about. <laughs> I literally stay up all night and think about it. Ah. Uh, Anyway, sorry, so with the Winter Doctor, Phil Smith, and Dr. Hedgehog, go and check them all out. Fabulous cosplayers. Okay, Mr. Pertwee, your line is, Madam, what year is this? Very important, pronunciate. Action! Madam, what year is this? <laughs> Perfection! Yeah! Oh, right, I got ya. Okay, I've got a very important message. It's about Series 13. You don't want to top off. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm sorry, I've got to compose myself. The Series 13 news is... It's returning! Yes, that famous villain! Everybody's favourite! It's returning! I'm so excited to be able to tell you. But don't tell Chip that I said anything. He'll kill me. But yes! It's returning! Jodie, who are you talking to? Uh-oh. It's the other shout out! I got two. Firstly, is TARDIS glitch back, but it's for the same thing as the teaser clip. Basically, he messaged me saying he was a bit sort of downtrod about the uh, low turnout, so I'm gonna promote it again. It's his YouTube poop, uh, his latest one of the Ninth Doctor and Mr. Chicken. And to be honest, I, I was a bit wary about promoting the same thing again so close together, but then I remembered what episode it is and thought, what better place to put Ninth Doctor and Mr. Chicken? Doctor Who YouTube Poop, Episode 3, The Haunted House of Hull! Nothing scarier than Hull. Well, slough. And finally, one of my personal favourites that has came out, and I'm sure a lot of you know what this is, by Clever Dick Films, Doctor Who Review, The Companion's Brigadier. Whilst we all patiently wait for the Matt Smith era review, I'm happy to get these. He did one for Jamie McCrimmon, I think, another excellent choice. And they're such a clever way of uh, breaking up the, if we're being honest, quite long gaps, understandable long gaps between each Doctor video. And I mean, what other companion would be better suited for this than the Brigadier? If you're a Doctor Who fan and don't like the Brigadier, even if it's like you only like him in one era, like you only liked him in the Pertwee era or the Troughton era, if you don't like any of that, 
What's wrong with you? I don't want to do that whole thing of like, you're not a real fan if you do this, but it's the Brigadier. Come on. <laughs> It's such a legacy. Nicholas Courtney, man, he was born to play this character and the video by Cleverdick Films really cements that. Seeing his history and how he got to that role was really interesting. I didn't realise how ingrained he really is in the show, starting in the Troughton era and getting mentions up until at least the Capaldi era. That is like 50 years of legacy right there. That is insane. But yes, the video is incredible, well put together as ever. Clever Dick Films, I should really get you on the show at some point. Go and check it out. It is <coughs> fantastic. Do you get it? Because the Ninth Doctor once said fantastic at least once. Get back! With his name expanded to Lethbridge Stewart and a Stockholm moustache to make him look a bit older than his 38 years, the character made his debut in the now sadly missing third episode of the story. Well, before you begin this rapturous reunion, the one or two questions I'd like answered. I really should have done the whole show in a northern accent, shouldn't I? That would have been interesting. And never address it either. Just like, no, this is my actual voice. Fantastic. Do you like a banana? Yeah, let's shove all the references in. But unfortunately, that ends today's show. I hope you enjoyed, I hope the skit was worth it, I don't know what that is yet. Yeah, I can't always be ahead of everything. <laughs> See you on the 24th of October for the true spooks to begin. And maybe another limited edition design in the store. Ta-ta for now. <laughs> <laughs>